gosh! Oh my gosh! Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. Today is all about the swim jig. Everything you need to know about a swim jig, but first, I have a little experiment. You guys know me, you know I love to fish a floating worm, and I love to fish a bubblegum floating worm, a methylate, a really bright colored floating worm. Well, today, I wanna see if I can catch one on a really bright colored swim jig. I like to throw the swim jig and the floating worm in some of the same conditions and situations, but I've never thrown a bubblegum swim jig like the one I got here. So let's give it a whirl see if the fish don't like this. Real quick guys, this video is brought to you by the Bass Hat, this hat with a wooden bass patch on the top. Click the link below in the description. You can pick one up and help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel. Just fishing a grass flat here. Oh gosh, did you see that? Oh my gosh. Oh my. There you go. Does the pink swim jig work? Um, that was nuts. Holy crap. Not sure if you guys just saw that, but that fish, apps, I was bringing that bait in super quick and he absolutely freaking destroyed it. He destroyed it. I set it back down on the ground and watched him pick it up off the bottom. Gosh, what a fish. That was freaking awesome, dude. Let's let you go. Oh. Yes, sir. Old pink swim jig. Come here, baby. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Look at that one. That's a solid one, guys. I'm really liking the old pinky. Oh, we got it. Oh, dude, they're actually freaking eating this. Look at that. Another one. That one fish gave me the clue as to exactly what to do. I had literally covered a lot of this area, kind of fishing it high and slower. I was literally bringing my reel in and the bass just blew it up. And now I've caught like three or four fish right in this little area, really bringing this thing. I mean, as fast as you can. So you always got to listen to the fish. So let's talk about a few things that will make you a better swim jig fisherman. One of the first things that I want to talk about is exactly how to fish a swim jig okay this is what's going to be the difference between you catching fish on a swim jig and not and guys really there's a lot of different ways to fish a swim jig okay i'm going to go over real quick the three basic ways to do it now the first one you can literally just cast out and swim in like i am right now literally not doing anything with your rod that's one way to fish it another way is to cast it out and do what they call the alabama shake in that case, I'm going to be sitting here and I'm just sitting here popping my rod, popping, popping, popping my rod. I'm letting that swim jig flare. It's flaring, flaring, flaring. And sometimes that can really make a difference in getting more bites is making that swim jig flare. The next one is what they call the Carolina hop, okay? And that's really kind of when you're going to cast it out. A lot of guys fish this around docks and they're really just going to kind of slip, like hop it right below the surface, okay? Just like I am right now. I'm just kind of hopping this right below the surface. That's all that really is. You're just kind of letting that bait kind of come up, fall, come up, fall. That's called the Carolina hop. Now those are kind of the three ways that we fish swim jigs a lot. But guys, what I want to tell you that I think is extremely important is where and how fast you fish it in the water column, okay? So in my mind, there's really four main ways that you can fish a swim jig in the water column, okay? You can fish it high in the water column, just below the surface and fast. You can also go high in the water column, but slow, make it a slow presentation. You can also fish it low in the water column and fast or you can go low in the water column and slow, okay? Those are really the four different ways in the water that you can fish a swim jig. Now guys, figuring out how the fish like that swim jig at the particular time 
is, is basically what's gonna dictate what you use as far as a weight of your swim jig. For instance, if you wanna fish a swim jig really high in the water column, just below the surface, but you want it to be moving slow, you're gonna fish a quarter ounce weight. You're gonna be able to keep that bait really high, but you can work it really slow without it falling. Now, if you want that bait to go very fast and just below the surface, you can step up to a 3 8 ounce, even a half ounce at times. You can actually have that jig come really, really quick, but just below the surface of the water. Now, let's talk about the other thing. If you're fishing it lower in the water column, and guys, most of the time when I fish a swim jig, I'm not fishing it much more than about five, six, seven feet below the surface of the water. If I wanna fish it low and slow, that's when I'm gonna pick up a 3 8 and I'm gonna fish it low and slow. Now, if I wanna step it up, I could go to a half ounce or maybe a three quarter ounce swim jig, but that way I could fish a swim jig low and fast. All around good weight to me is three eighths ounce. That's the one that I pick up a lot of the times to start with. It's really all about figuring out how the fish want that bait. As you can see just a few minutes ago, I started swimming this jig extremely fast and extremely high in the water column and I got a big one to react to it. I caught it and I started doing that and it was the difference between literally catching no fish and catching a lot of fish. You gotta figure out what is the cadence you want to use for a swim jig. Now let's talk about another thing and that's color. I really like to keep color extremely, extremely simple. Today is a little bit of an X factor. This is probably gonna be something I add to my tackle box now, especially early early in the year. All right guys, but when it comes to color, I really like a white or shad colored swim jig. I'm gonna fish that a lot where I think the fish are eating threadfin shad or gizzard shad. This is something I like to fish around docks and boat docks, skip it underneath docks when they're on a shad spawn, things like that. The other color and one that I use a lot when I think the fish are feeding heavily on bluegill is green pumpkin. Any type of green pumpkin, I like to dip the tails in chartreuse to really make that profile look like a bluegill. That is another great swim jig. All right, and the other color is basically black and blue, guys. Now, black and blue is a color that I typically use on very dark days. So if it's very dark outside, you got clouds, you got overcast conditions, or if I'm fishing darker or stained water. So sometimes in Florida, a black and blue, you have that really dark water, that tannic water. A black and blue works really well down there. Muddy water is another time when I'm gonna fish a black and blue swim jig. That's kind of what I like to do with my colors. White for shad patterns, green pumpkin for bluegill patterns, black and blue for dark water. And now I'm gonna use this pink, probably in a few situations. I'm gonna start experimenting with it. This is literally the first time that I've ever fished it. I'll probably fish it early in the year when fish kind of like that crazy colors at times. And I might fish it for smallmouth and see if they like it. All right guys, so the last part about swim jig fishing I wanna talk about is your equipment. Now, I like to fish the same rod whether I'm fishing braided line or fluorocarbon for a swim jig. And I fish both, and I'll get to that in just a second. But the rod, I'm gonna fish anything from a seven foot to a seven foot three medium heavy action rod. This is the Akumo Psycho Stick. It's a seven two medium heavy action perfect for swim jigs. I don't want a really long rod because I like to skip swim jigs a lot. So that shorter rod really helps me to skip well, but I'm also going to have power in a rod. Now, as far as line goes, a lot of times if I'm fishing that bait high in the water column, I'm going to use braid. And I like to use 40 pound braid, sometimes 50 pound braid, but usually that's the braid that I like to fish. And again, I'm gonna fish that anytime I'm fishing pretty high in the water column. Now guys, sometimes I will go down to 20 pound fluorocarbon, maybe even 15 pound fluorocarbon. And that's really dependent on if I'm fishing the bait low. If I'm fishing it lower in that water column, you know, five, six, seven, eight foot deep, I'm gonna fish fluorocarbon because it's gonna allow that jig to get down deeper and I'm gonna have better control over that. But the same rod, and guys, I'm always using an eight to one gear ratio reel with my swim jigs. I think that's a great gear ratio for all swim jigging applications. That's the system, that's the setup. That's how I like to fish a swim jig. I hope these tips help you guys with swim jigging. Guys, don't forget about a pink one. It obviously works. So guys, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please comment below if you have a question and please subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.